So four years ago, I moved to the city of Dubai, and it was a very exciting prospect. I was about to join a new sustainability movement in a place that is not commonly known for being sustainable, and help green the built environment there. So a warrior, really. And the day I moved to Dubai, my excitement was taken to a whole different level. Basically, I realized the task was huge in front of us. If you've seen, if you've seen be, uh, Dubai before, you probably see that it's a very modern city with the best standard of living. People seem happy, more or less. Um, but at the same time, everything is so huge. The roads are massive, they're difficult to walk, there's very little sense of community, there are glass building and greenery and water fountains everywhere, and we are in the desert. There then the indoors were freezing, while the outdoors are very hot, and all these contracts obviously come at a price. You know, it's this kind of development and this kind of growth came uh, with a reliance on fossil fuel energy, with uh, deep extraction of natural resources like water, etc. And, well, if we compare that to the older cities in the desert, we can see that there are quite differences there. You know, these are cities that were built decades ago, maybe 100 years ago, with the principles of, I have some local resources, I have to use them. So different people done different things. In Tunisia and Matmata, for example, people dug holes in the ground to create housing. In other places, like Petra in Jordan, they carved the side of mountains to create beautiful cities. Or simply, they invented the brick, like the cities in, of Yemen, where they were able to build you know, high-rise towers. And regardless of the settlement they decided to use, they had to resolve three main design problems. The first one was, I have to shelter from the elements. Extreme temperatures, wind conditions, dust, solar radiation. I have to also make sure I foster interaction between people and grow this economic activity that can happen in a city. And obviously do all this with a minimum use of resources or the most efficient way, you know, the most efficient way of using resources that are available locally. So they were smart, they came up with ideas. First, they invented intricate pathways that are usually shaded most of the time, so it's more comfortable for, pedest for pedestrians. They used um, thick walls that with high thermal mass that keep the space cool during the day and warmer at night when the desert is very cold. They also invented the oldest form of air conditioning systems in the Arabian Peninsula called the Barjil or the wind tower. And every time they used greenery, they had to use it for a meaningful purpose, like a growing food or creating shade. And these concepts are concepts that we can still use today. We can actually engineer them further, advance them further to get more energy efficiency, more water conservation in our building, more livability. Because at the end of the day, our cities are there not just to be better for the environment, but for people and for economic growth, etc., to be more sustainable. And that's the kind of thinking we're trying to have as sustainability consultants, designers, engineers, architects um, in the region and elsewhere. We're trying to think about how can we do more with less. And the nice thing is, is that in our region, we're starting to see some good examples, modern examples, that is. Uh, the first one I would like to mention is um, the new progressive uh, sustainable urban po policies that were developed by the government of Abu Dhabi. They're reshaping the neighborhoods a bit differently. There are neighborhoods now where we can walk easily in the shade, where we have different pocket parks, etc., where people can interact, uh, where we have a, a true sense of community and complete communities where the facilities are closer to us and we can have access to them um, uh, easily. They also develop a program called Estidama for rating the performance of buildings from the worst to the best, and so that they can encourage better performance or environmental performance of these buildings. So we should expect also less use of resources, energy, water, materials, etc. And we started seeing some examples also built. Here, the example of Master City, where uh, all, the all the ideas like the wind tower you see there on the left, and the mashrabiya system for windows are being used now in modern sitting, a setting. But they're also using solar energy, they're doing calculations, optimizing the performance. And it's really exciting to see these kind of examples. We're actually on our path to developing better cities, better buildings, better neighborhoods, because it's very important. If we can make it work in the desert, it can work everywhere else. Thank you. <laughs>